China remains our biggest long-term challenge. With our focused involvement and engagement by the United States and our allies and partners, China will realize its dream of hegemony in Asia. We should cooperate with Beijing where we can, but stand ready to confront them where we must. Well, that is Admiral Harry Harris uh, a couple of months ago talking about China and the threat from China. He's the former U.S. Pacific Forces uh, commander. Now a new report from the Pentagon suggests China is targeting the U.S. or uh, definitely training for strikes against the U.S. The report, annual report to Congress over the last three years, the Army there in China expanding its overwater bomber operating areas, a stealthy long-range strategic bomber with nuclear de delivery capability that could be operational within the next 10 years, uh, computer systems definitely investing in that, attacking U.S. government systems, uh, China's comprehensive military modernization program aimed at increasing its military and making it world class by 2049. So with that, let's bring in our panel. Tom Rogan, commentary writer for the Washington Examiner. Karen Tumulty, opinion writer for the Washington Post. And Morgan Ortegas, national security analyst and co-founder of Go Advisors. Uh, Morgan, let me start with you. It, you know, we get these reports annually. I used to cover the Pentagon. Um, it, it's always an assessment, but this one really raised some eyebrows today. Yeah, I think anyone who's watching uh, the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, the Chinese military expansion, this isn't a surprise, actually. If you look at the president's national security strategy, one of the things that you hear the administration talking about most is this great power conflict that we're entering, this, this era of great power competition, specifically with the Chinese. So with the amount of money that the Chinese are spending on their military, I think it's natural that they're building up their capabilities. Uh, they're looking at, with the South China Sea, their sphere of influence, right? They, they want us to have less influence in their region. They they want navigation uh, of the seas. So the, the Chinese military buildup is, is not a surprise to me. But what I do think that we have had our eye off the ball for the past 10 years in, in Republican and Democrat administrations is how we effectively counter them and how we maintain freedom of navigation and freedom of the seas. I mean, speaking of navigation, we've got these pop-up islands, Karen, in the South China Sea that the U.S. Navy has had kind of... Uh, skirmishes with the Chinese uh, trying to hold the the line there as they get as you see uh, naval vessels through that area um, there's some tense times in that area and I think that our national conversation about China particularly in, in the Trump administration has been primarily an economic one we've talked about China in terms of tariff wars I do think that and certainly back during the Obama administration they kept talking about their great pivot to Asia that never seemed to quite happen um, I do think that we do have to start realizing that China really is the next great superpower and that their goals are expanding their influence not just in Asia but around the world. Here's the Vice President Tom. Uh, we were talking about this possible space force, the, the administration moving forward this. Uh, he mentioned China. China claimed to have made its first successful test of a hypersonic vehicle just last week. It's hypersonic missiles designed to fly up to five miles per second at such low altitudes that they could potentially evade detection by our missile defense radars. As their actions make clear, our adversaries have transformed space into a warfighting domain already. So you, you think that this, the trade stance and the talking out about the military tied together? I do, I do. And I wasn't sure about that a couple of months ago, but now I think from the administration, you see Mike Pompeo today meeting a Tibetan monk, you see uh, the invitation of the Taiwanese president in town. You also see the U.S. Navy really kind of catching up with the Chinese with some of these standoff missile platforms and also perhaps moving more towards the uh, submarine fleet away from the carriers actually behind the scenes in doctrine because of their vulnerability to China. Chinese missiles. But I think the exigent point is that this is the new challenge for the 21st century. Um, one positive, I think the alliances, Vietnam now, and incredibly growing very close to the United States, that allows us to push back some of that Chinese influence. 